in this video we're going to talk about potential energy in some ways that we haven't actually talked about it before. And in our last video, we got to the point where we said, at the equilibrium distance, the molecules are extremely stable, kind of at their most stable point, actually. And it just so happened that it also had its most negative potential energy there. And this video will explain that that's actually not a coincidence, and they're kind of saying the same thing. So I want you to imagine someone playing soccer, kicking a ball. And we have three different people. We have a person that's kind of on flat ground. We have a person who's playing on a hill. And we have a person who's playing in a ditch or a well. And these three situations will present uh, us with our positive potential energy, our zero potential energy, and our negative potential energy. And in number two, positive potential energy, this is the thing that's kind of most familiar to us with gravity, right? Just because of where this ball is, it will kind of take care of itself. It has energy already stored up. And so if I just give it a little tiny tap, it will go all the way down here all by itself, right? And it will end up going faster than how fast I kicked it, right? So here, kind of, at, it's, uh, I would say it's extra unstable. The ball is unstable because if I just give it a little tap, it'll go all the way down the hill. Right, so a little tap will make it go all the way down the hill. And then the energy that's used to do that would be its potential energy, which would be converted to kinetic energy in our gravity example. For zero potential energy, number one, it's kind of you get what you paid for. You kick the ball, it'll go where you're, how far you kicked it, right? It'll, it'll go as far as the energy you give it takes it. And of course, that's because there's friction. But I would call that the zero potential energy, it's, ni it's neither stable nor unstable, right? It's not going to do anything crazy. It's not going to go out much further than you kicked it for some reason. It's not going to, like, zoom out just because you tap it. But at the same time, it's not, like, resisting moving at all, okay? And that brings us to number three, negative potential energy. So now this person in the ditch, when they kick the ball, they might kick it really hard. But in the end, the ball will kind of slow down and then roll back down the hill, back to where it started. And in this way, I'm going to call it stable, right? Even if you kick the ball, it will return to you. Right? It does not want to move. And the only way that we could kind of get this ball out of here is if we kicked it out of the ditch. Right? But that would, you would need a lot of energy for that, to kick it all the way out. Otherwise, it's kind of trapped in this well. And this is how we think about potential energy on that last graph we had. I'll remind you, it looks something like this. With R here, we could put potential energy here and force here. Right, and the force looks something like this. And it hit zero at the equilibrium distance. And then the potential energy, something like this. And at the equilibrium distance is at its lowest potential energy. And so what this is saying is that really at the equilibrium distance, Molecules or atoms are at their most stable. They resist change, just like kind of the ball and spring example. They resist change. And at this distance, our equilibrium is special in a way. And in the next video, we'll finally relate all of this stuff to states of matter in a very concrete way.